everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. I'm still over in Sacramento, but I'm gonna be leaving soon to go back to Texas. So I thought I'd make one more video. And this one is kind of an important one, and this is gonna be about calculating your manpower. And uh, we're gonna get into work orders and work order notes on this as well, okay? Because this is kind of an important thing, and both these, both these things kind of go together. They really do. All right, so first off, you have to learn the term. It's called FTE. And that, one way to say it is full-time employee. So you want to calculate your FTEs for your establishment. And there's a variety of ways to do that. There's not really a complete standard, okay? Now the ways that they calculate FTEs, some places do it based on the number of medical devices that are on record. It used to be around 800 medical devices per biomed technician, but that number went to 1,000 as the standard. Then it went to 1,200. Now I'm seeing 1,400, 1,500, even 1,600 devices per biomed employee. And I don't care who you are. If you do 1,600 medical devices per biomed employee, you have a lick and stick biomed PM program, guaranteed. I don't care who it is that, that counteracts this online. You, sir or ma'am, have a lick and stick biomed program. That's all there is to it. Now, the next way that they calculate the number of FTEs is the size of the medical facility in square feet. Now, that's one way of doing it because if you have multiple buildings and you have it spread out, that's gonna be a heck of a lot more square footage than all in one composite building. So, square footage is one way of doing it because the farther your accounts are from one another, the more people you're gonna to have to have, right? just like the age of your medical equipment. If you have new medical equipment, you can have less biomeds, but if the hospital doesn't routinely buy new medical equipment, as that equipment gets older, you need more biomeds. That's all there's to it, and, and not too many shops abide by that. They think that you know it's the same whether or not you have brand new equipment versus uh, old equipment. That's definitely not true. Okay. So we have the number of devices per technician. You have the size of the facility and square footage. Another way that they do it is the dollars of capital equipment on inventory. All right, so capital equipment is normally any medical device over $5,000, which is a vast majority of the medical devices. But uh, the dollars of capital equipment that you have on inventory, that is one way that they judge the amount of biomeds because you should be able to take a percentage of um, your inventory and that is your cost for upkeep. It's kind of like when you have a boat. When you have a boat, they say if you have a $1 million boat that you should expect one or 10%. Uh, they say 10% for a boat should be your upkeep. So if you have a $10,000 boat, you should naturally expect to pay $1,000 per year and upkeep. So it's kind of like that with medical equipment. If you have a million dollars with medical equipment, there's a certain percentage, and that percentage has changed, um, that you should expect in your FTE, plus your contract costs, maintenance costs, all that, it's all rolled into a percentage of your purchase price of the, de of the device. But there's one other way that they will judge the amount of FTEs, and this is probably the number one way, okay? The number one way is they measure and they monitor the hours of productivity for every technician. Now, if they're really good at this, then if your technicians are putting in eight to nine hours per day, then you should say that they're 100% productive, 110% even. So your hours of productivity logged in on work orders is one metric that they use to judge how many FTEs you need. So here's the thing, is this ties directly into work order notes, okay? You can't just drop eight hours on a patient warmer, all right? And if you do, you better have some damn good notes, okay? Because if they are dropping like two or three work orders per day in repairs, maybe they're not the best at repairs. Maybe that person shouldn't be doing repairs. Maybe they're milking work orders. It happens. I've seen it many times throughout my career where a biomed will do two, maybe three work orders a day and 
they'll drop like four hours on a work order. It's like, man, I've seen you walk around talking to people most of the day. So your hours of productivity coincide directly with your work order notes. So work order notes is a whole nother video, but it, it does tie directly into this because if you have really garbage notes, like PM completed per manufacturer spec, if that is the only thing you write in your work order notes, I'm probably not going to respect your work order. Not very much. I mean, that is like the, the cop out thing, PM completed. I've seen that in so many work orders, PM completed. It's like, but wait a minute, you just did a ventilator. That's all you're gonna write is PM completed. You're not gonna list off the filters you installed, the fact that you know you did electrical safety on it. You're not gonna list off anything else that you did on this device, just PM completed or PM completed per manufacturer spec. Those are garbage, lazy notes, guys. And the thing is, is if you have really intricate notes, not only does it help you in the future if you look back on the history of what you did to this device, but it also helps anybody that comes after you. See, that's the, that's the thing about this. Your productivity measuring FTEs, if you have really garbage notes, people naturally think, okay, well, he's too lazy to write really good notes. He couldn't have been that productive, right? That's just, it's a natural human response. That's what they think. So if you have really good notes, not only does it help you, you know, with the future of your maintenance program, but it also helps you justify your time to get more FTEs, all right? So guys, don't just write garbage notes on your work orders. I know a bunch of you are gonna probably argue this out on there. You do your lazy notes, go ahead. I can't, nobody's gonna stop you. And I know that probably a lot of you do it, but I highly encourage people not to write lazy notes because anybody that looks into those work orders and they keep track of how many work orders you do per day, well, if you have really good notes, it justifies why you took so long to do that. Maybe you had to run back to get parts completely across the medical campus. Maybe because you know you did something and it didn't work out, so you had to do something else. Write that in the notes, all right? With with date and timestamps if you have to. But um, anyway, guys, that is the four ways that they judge for FTEs. That's full time employees. Uh, some other people say other things, but it's full time employee, okay? And your FTEs, you calculate how many are supposed to be at your medical facility. And more importantly, if you have construction projects or expansions or something like that, you have to constantly recalculate your FTEs based on what you predict the future is going to be, the near future for your medical facility. Because as you guys know, it's not the easiest thing. Biomeds don't just walk in off the street. There's incredible demand for biomeds right now. So you have to predict ahead of time, write those job descriptions ahead of time, and you have to advertise ahead of time because other words, you're gonna be chasing your tail. Once you get behind the curve on your maintenance program and repair program, you're constantly chasing your tail to try and catch up. So I do admire you guys that have really good work order notes. I love that. I love that as a team leader to be able to go through and actually see what my guys are doing. I love following through. You know, sometimes biomeds die, sometimes they retire, sometimes they just up and leave. But it's nice to go in and read their work orders later and see, you know, all their notes and every little valve or flapper or whatever they did to change. I love being able to read up on the history of a device when I'm working on it, especially if you get a repair, right? And it helps the managers justify the amount of FTEs for your medical facility. It really does. Okay, guys. So that's pretty much it. That's FTE calculation and work order notes. They are extremely important because you might actually end up working your butt off later on because you yourself left really garbage notes. It's true. It's, I've seen it before. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.